you probably clicked this video because you want to make turkey. You don't have that much space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this turkey. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to put it into these little baggies. You could do Ziplocs. I'm going to brine it. It's going to be really tasty. I've got this nice salt that I have these herbs in. Really, really delicious turkey salt, I'm going to call it. I've already got these drying out, ready to go in the oven. I'm also going to show you how I make turkey stock. Very simple. And we're going to turn that into a turkey jus. So go ahead and stay tuned. Watch the whole video. Let's start. All right, first let's get this brine. Start off with some spice tribe peppercorn, some coriander in there, and then throw in the garlic cloves, crush them up a bit, through some fresh thyme, and about two big grabs of salt, or two cups. Then I did this spice tribe maple in there. You could do brown sugar if you don't have that. Bring that to a boil. Now the reason why I start off with less water than I need is because I like to add ice at the end, so I don't need to wait for my brine to cool down. Hey, turkey time! My grandma always does this, she makes the turkey dance. Let's go ahead and start this guy, huh? Now, so brief breakdown on the bird. Take off the wing tips because we're not going to really cook these. We're going to save these for the stock, perfect for that. Now work your way around this leg quarter. Start from the inside, then you work your way your outside. Work, blah, blah, work your way through the outside. Then get this little oyster portion here. And then I just work my way through the bones and then take it off. Not really gonna go into detail on how to break down a bird here. And there we go, we have our beautiful leg quarter, the best part of the turkey, the brown meat. Delicious. So now for the breast or the white meat. Work your way down the ribs. And I just like to keep sliding my knife downward on the rib cage along the edge to pretty much use it as a guide. So once I do that, I usually flip around during this portion right here, just so it's easier for me to handle. So flip the bird around, then work your way through the airline bone. And that's pretty much it. Take the breast off. And then you're gonna just repeat this on the other side. We're breaking down the bird here just so we have more room in our fridge. I know not everybody has so much room in there to brine a turkey. You pretty much need a bucket to brine it in your fridge. So once you got all this stuff done, we're using those for stock, the neck and the wingtips. Putting this in a little bag, I'm gonna vacuum seal it. And if you don't have a vacuum sealer, that's fine. You could do a zip block baggie as well, just like this. And you're gonna put your brine in that and then take all the air out. Works just fine. So pour in the brine on here, just enough if you're vacuum sealing, and pour in more if you're just doing a Ziploc baggie. Seal it up, and there you go. It could lay flat just like that in your fridge. Put something under it just in case. And then I'm just gonna vacuum seal this guy. Let it sit in the fridge for about six hours, or I can leave it in there for a day or two. Okay, now we are at the turkey demi portion of the video. This is a great alternative to gravy. So we're gonna start with our stock. All the carcass, neck, and the wingtips. Bake at 500 until it gets some nice color, just like this right here. And then I like to deglaze my pan with some water and add that into my stock pot. Get all those little yum yums in there. Yeah. So, once we bring this up to a boil, I'm just gonna lower the heat and then drop it to a simmer, let it go till it reduces, till I don't know, half or two thirds, as much as you want. We're gonna reduce it with all this nice stuff in here and then we're gonna strain it and then we're gonna start our demi. So just reduce it, let it go for like six hours or so on low heat. In case you're wondering, I did mirepoix, carrot, celery, onion, and then I did some herbs, peppercorn, some garlic, and I just let that go until it pretty much went down by half. 
you don't want to boil it because then you're going to have a really murky stock and it's not going to be nice. So I just strained this through a fine sieve and then a regular one. So now once we got liquid gold status, I'm going to chill this. You don't need to do this, but I'm doing this just to show you how nice this stock can be. Once it's chilled, you can take all the fat off and you're left with a very nice product. Six hours later. So as you can see, our liquid gold became a gelatinous gold. Beautiful. You could take all the soft fat off the top and you're left with a nice stock here. This is going to be our base for the demi we're about to make. Onion, chop that up. Doesn't matter how you cut it. We're going to cook this until it's very, very dark. So start off with no fat in a cast iron pot and then add a touch of water once you get some color. Stir it up really good. And we're going to repeat this process until we get to a really dark color. Keep doing that. Stir, stir, stir. Add your water. Stir, stir, stir. Add your water. You get the drill. So we're going to keep doing this until it turns a pretty dark color here. Once we reach this color, I'm going to add in my herbs and then some red wine. Any red wine will do. And then just reduce that red wine off sec pretty much till it's done. No red wine left. And then there's no more liquid left. And then at that point, we're going to add in a really nice stock, give it a little stir, bring it to a boil, then drop it back to a simmer and just let it hang out until it reduces down to a beautiful and thick demi. This is actually a good replacement for a gravy. If you don't want to do gravy, gluten free. I mean, it's also a whole different thing on its own. I mean, look at this beautiful. You can bring it down a little more if you want as well. I didn't reduce it that much because then I wouldn't have much of a yield. So strain it through a very fine strainer and then there you go. Turkey Demi, you could save this in the fridge for about a week or you could freeze it indefinitely. Beautiful. Liquid gold. Hey, we're making turkey, remember? So turkey salt, rosemary, sage, some thyme, and then we're going to blend that all together with the salt. This is going to be really nice salt to put on there once we take it out of the brine. Give it a good old blitz and then it should look like this. Very fine pulverized turkey salt. Take them out of the brine, put them on a rack, because we're going to roast them. We're going to roast these birdies. Yep, you got it right. Pat it dry with a towel, and then just give it a good old rubbing with the turkey salt. This is going to make sure that we have a very nice crispy skin. Don't worry about over salting. The brine doesn't make it salty. It just makes it more flavorful. So you could see all the liquid has come off and now we're gonna get ready to roast. Roast at 400 Fahrenheit. And then after about 20 minutes or so, you can go ahead and lower the heat to 325 until we reach an internal temperature of about 160, not 165, because it'll carry over, it'll be fine. And then it'll look beautiful like this. A little golden, a little crispy, a little juicy inside, maybe a lot juicy inside. Cut that mother up and then enjoy it by yourself or with your family however you want to do Thanksgiving or if it's not Thanksgiving and you're watching this video just because you want to make turkey that's fine cut it up listen to that really nice crunch though a lot of people have been asking me online wet brine or dry brine I don't know where this is all coming from brines are usually wet with liquid I mean it makes it more flavorful and as you can see very juicy so go ahead and do this process try it out let me know what you think have a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you in the next one.